and welcome back to another episode of Why I Hate This Movie. I'm your host, Derek Rios, and with always, my co-host and heterosexual life mate, Danny Newton. How you doing today, Danny? I'm doing pretty good, Derek. How are you? I am fine. Today we're going to be talking about 1995's movie Tank Girl. Oh yeah, blockbuster. Something like that. Yeah. Based off of a British comic strip. Mm-hmm. Called Tank Girl, where this girl rides around in a tank in a post apocalyptic world and uh, her home's a tank. So that's. Yeah. That's the basis. And it is. <laughs> a shit show, <laughs> to say the least. You didn't, you didn't enjoy this? This wasn't good for you? No. <laughs> I, just off the bat, the music. I just, I just, I really hated the whole thing, the whole punk rock theme. I, I just, I'm not a fan of the music. The punk rock theme didn't bother me, the, really. Everything else in this fucking bothered the shit. Out of it me. wasn't. The, I mean, I just, I just don't like the music. I, I just, I hated the the whole. You know, all the soundtracks were awful, except for Ice T. Yeah, Ice T's little couple raps were. Oh my god, pretty entertaining. That <laughs> we'll we'll talk about Ice T and that those that crew later. Yeah, the Jazz Man. <laughs> so we have uh, the main character Tank Girls played by Lori Petty. Yes, which um, not the most well known actress. No, probably because of shit like this. <laughs> probably I, because she acts like this all the time. She is what I would compare to the female version of Polly Shore. Kinda. So when I was watching through this, I got a distinct vibe of two characters that we know. Okay. Did it feel like this wanted to be Deadpool and Harley Quinn yes. mashed together? They definitely it definitely has that vibe. I I, I got both of those vibes. Mm-hmm. But I also got, I, and there is a good reason. Uh, I felt like her character was based off Madonna. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that. But I think the uh, the from, punk the punk aesthetic for Madonna well, uh, definitely. I, I'm pretty sure is because the the makeup artist that did most of the makeup in this mm -hmm. was Madonna's makeup artist from her videos. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Her aesthetic really was all like punk rock all the time. You know how fucked up her hair was. Oh yeah, <laughs> she looks like uh, the chick from Die Antwoord. A lot of time. a lot of alt punk girls shaved like down the side of their head or something like that. It was just the top was shaved and it was long <laughs> on two sides. Yeah, yes. just the entire center was just buzzed. That's why a lot of the the role got turned down quite a bit because a lot of females didn't want to take the role and shave their head. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a couple Spice Girls that uh, applied. So it starts out with a little monologue. So it yeah. introduces us into this world. The year is 2033. Apparently in the past, a comet hit and there's just no more water. Uh, like all the water's dried up. So it wasn't a planet destroyer, but it's a big enough comet that. Let's see if I can uh, recall here. What are comets made of? Uh, space ice. Ice. Yeah. What is ice made out of? A meteor. <laughs> it could have been a meteor. All right. It could have been. But this whole scenario is basically reverse Waterworld. Yeah. Which actually Waterworld came out the same year. Mm hmm. So it yeah, did. It's, uh, it's kind of like Waterworld, but with sand instead of water. Even though they say, they talk about how there's no more water left. It hasn't rained in 11 years. They waste water in this movie. Yeah. All like, the time real life today <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much what we're going through the day where oh there's not enough drinking water but they just oh we're gonna throw it on our crops even though we don't need it it's it's kind of the same show we're going through right now sadly yeah i mean it's pretty much modern day california yeah uh, it's yeah. it's just not it's already burned down but, but yeah they, uh, once you get past the first little bit there's just water constantly in this movie being wasted other than her acting obnoxious all the time, mm -hmm. for me, this entire movie was reverse Waterworld. Her tank, whenever she gets it, is essentially like Kevin Costner's little outrigger thing, right? 
So well, the difference is she even has her buddy who is a smoker pilot. <laughs> so the difference is in Waterworld, Kevin Costner's boat doesn't autopilot itself and go around <laughs> murdering everybody. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> the tank she has. God forbid it doesn't have autopilot and do everything itself because she sure as fuck can't drive it. Right. She has no <laughs> idea how to pilot it. She just she just sits on it the whole time. Man, this movie is like it's tears of bad. Ah, uh, it's dude. it's bad. <laughs> I her character's so fucking annoying. It's, it's she's trying to be this whimsical, cartoony comic character. And yeah. It's just yeah. And it's all obnoxious. the jokes. There's so many like just outdated references now. Did you and laugh at anything that you were supposed to laugh at? No. No, I didn't either. I, I'm pretty... Anything that came out of her, I just hurt. Yeah. Physically yeah. hurt. <laughs> Whenever uh, Malcolm McDowell stabs that captain dude with the water thing. Captain Douche? Yeah. Captain Douchebag? It's, it's, cap, <laughs> it's Captain Darouche, but it's, it's Captain Douche. <laughs> I laughed at that. Oh, yeah. I laughed at that. I, I didn't find myself laughing at anything that was supposed to be the humor in this movie. Yeah, so pretty much there's this the bad guy organization called Water and Power, mm -hmm. like an electric companies, but yep. there is no power. Right. It's just water. But I guess with water, water is, is power. power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a group of, they're just reavers to me. Yeah. Like, that's what I thought they were. But eventually you figure out who they are later. <laughs> but they're called Rippers. And yeah. they're just mystery faction who the leader of their group is Johnny Prophet. So you had never seen this movie before we watched it. I honestly did not remember <laughs> watching this movie as a child. I might have once, but I blocked it out. Oh, man. How did you feel when you saw a Ripper? <laughs> um... <laughs> well, I knew it was coming. I've seen pictures. I yeah. remember them being in here. So rippers are pretty much mutated humans mm -hmm. with kangaroo DNA. Yes. So whenever you first see them on like their thermal cameras or whatever, yeah, they almost look like xenomorphs, right? They're wearing armor. Yeah. But then it, when you see them outside of that, God. it's rough. <laughs> it looks they, so bad. So. I mean, we'll, we'll get to the Rippers. Uh, they don't come in and really until halfway through the movie, which I, it felt like it was two hours. If The first half of this movie felt two hours long. <laughs> it didn't feel like that long of a watch to me. It's, I, every it, it every scene, I'd have watch. to pause and rewind and be like, What the fuck did I just see? What just happened? <laughs> I, I, I was just so confused. Even the, the, even the, the, the prologue. At the mm -hmm. beginning of the movie, I was just so confused because she she's rambling on talking about all these different backstory of this world. I was under the impression that Johnny Prophet was was the leader of Water and Power and that the Rippers worked for him is the yeah. way she made it sound. Yeah, it is the way she made it sound. Their fucking secret base is a house in the middle of just fucking wide open desert. Nothing yeah. around. Well, it's not really a secret base. It's just a group of people miles. that they're stealing water from the ground. How does water and power have all this hardware and just didn't automatically roll these people? It's so weird because it has the steampunk aspect where it, they don't have good technology. No. But then turn around, <laughs> then it's like, oh, we have cybernetic enhancing parts and holograms. All, all their fucking technology in this house mm -hmm. is basically like Home Alone trap. Oh, oh right? yeah, yeah. It's so fucking bad. So they have this trench around the base that, <laughs> of course, everything's sand, and they have periscopes, uh huh, that are like a foot tall, maybe tops. <laughs> that she's just in a trench looking around, but she can literally just stand up, yeah. and look the same height as this fucking periscope. Well, when you're in trench warfare, Derek, you don't want to stand up and expose your head outside the trench. You're not in trench warfare. <laughs> You're just a scout. It's so stupid. It's just an OP, right? Oh, it's so like, stupid. And how was is, how is there only one OP around this house? You would think if there was a trench, it goes around the entire house, right? No. It's, it's on one side, and <laughs> they don't walk up from that side, I guess. Yeah. So the water power sends troops, and they have these stupid-looking night vision goggles. 
I don't know what they were. It but. looks like somebody just just glued a printed circuit board to their face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's it has this weird sexual scene where she starts cutting all of her clothes up. Mm-hmm. It's like this is very wasteful. There can't be an abundance of clothing anymore. Nope. So she's just cutting all of her clothes up, thinking it's her boyfriend there. This scene has to be five or ten minutes long in actuality. Yeah. Because it's like slow-mo and cutting and stuff. And this guard just standing here watching her. <laughs> and then she finally like turns around and he cocks his gun. Here's the thing. I would have laughed more at this if the guard would have been professional. Right? Yeah. If he would have just been drop the scissors and then just fucking handcuffed her or something left her yeah. laying there. I would have laughed more but if like all of her ploys just don't work. Every guy in this movie is, is a moron. A, is dumb and also a pervert. Yes. They're this all guy, they're all rapists. They're yeah. all perverts. Yeah. They're all fucking idiots. This guy immediately is like, hey, if you just let me bang you, uh, maybe I won't have to arrest you. Even the good guys oh. are horny idiots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. She rides. She's riding around on an ox at first, right? Yes. Um, it's like an ox, or I think it's a yak. Yeah. While she's being held up by this guy, they storm the house and just start killing everybody. She does the oh the honey pot, just like oh hey, come over here and uh, help me. And mm-hmm. the guys just like oh yeah, and she immediately immediately takes this guy down and unpins a couple grenades on him. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's just like. Oh, shit. I liked that part. (laughs) That was pretty funny. (laughs) This doesn't even try to get him off himself, just accepts his fate. Oh, yeah. He explodes. Mm -hmm. And then a dropship comes in, which all the dropships, CGI dropships, just wanted to be Star Wars. But uh, you see inside, just so you know he's dead, her boyfriend getting gunned down by a guy with a minigun. A lot. From two feet away. A lot. (laughs) He unloads like a full (laughs) clip of a minigun into this guy from two feet away. Yeah, he's real dead. (laughs) Real dead. Just so we know. Oh, yeah, that guy's not coming back. I guess they kill everyone. They capture her, and then I guess the little girl gets sold off. I guess. The little girl had a couple of funny lines. I don't know if you caught him or not. Mm-hmm. She's uh, She has her brother. She calls him a peanut dick, right? Yep. <laughs> she says she says something like, no one's ever seen your peanut dick before. I was like, I've never heard of peanut dick. That's pretty good. And then uh, she calls someone an ass smear. So I don't know why they fucking murder everybody in the house, but capture her because, you know, plot armor main character. But <laughs> She wasn't the only female in the house. <laughs> When our when our lead bad guy for this raid looks over and just shoots the yak, <laughs> I laughed. Uh, I laughed so fucking that poor hard. yak. So <laughs> <laughs> it just like <laughs> walked around the corner right into it. Yep. Like, well, he, he was like, "Don't you know you're not supposed to have animals?" And just murders this animal. <laughs> it's like why? And that poor thing. When he first introduced, she has these like weird goggles and like a little yes. plastic mask on it. Poor yak. At least it's out of its misery. <laughs> <laughs> it was like what was like what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing, movie? <laughs> it seems like a a valuable resource. It does. It does seem like a valuable resource since but no know, one no one most all animals pr- are should be dead. Yeah. No one has any farms. Right, they grow some vegetables, and that's it. There's no other food sources in this world. Yeah, that that, that shows you soil and green. I guess so. And this is how we're introduced to the bad guy. The main bad guy is Malcolm McDowell. Yes, he's and, too uh, good for this movie. He definitely is. Of course, <laughs> uh, you know he was in A Clockwork Orange a few years earlier than this, mm-hmm. and then he's been in a bunch of shit. So we're introduced with he, he's yelling at Captain Douche. <laughs> yes, and then. He, you're talking about uh, they don't have all the dune secured, apparently. They only have 99% or 95% of all the water right? that's underneath the sand anyway. So it's not like people have that great of access to it. He calls it a crack of land. <laughs> yeah. Is what he calls it. And he shatters this glass and makes him walk across it. And just, it's a pretty decent little monologue where he's yeah. just like, you're weak. You shouldn't have walked across this glass. You're dumb. He's like, I would have killed me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you're like- a coward. 
they have these devices in this movie. You see it three different times where it looks like a tattoo gun, almost like a large tattoo gun. And yeah, it has, it's got prongs on it. Yeah, it's got prongs like that. And they just jam it into you and it instantly just starts sucking all the water out of you. He stabs Captain Douche with this and it, it turns into about an eight ounce glass of water. You would think if a device like this was attached to you, mm -hmm. like stabbed into you, mm -hmm. your immediate reaction would be to fucking lose your mind trying to get this off of you, right? No one ever tries to Nobody remove it. Nobody ever tries to get this thing like out it, of them. It's just instantaneous to where, oh, you're already dead. Because it sucks the water out of you pretty quickly. It's a yeah. few seconds. I wonder how much it would actually produce this way. It, it feels know. like it'd be a lot more. Well, I would think if you pull all the water out of your blood... Not even counting just your body tissues. I would think you would easily be able to pull over a gallon of water out of the human body. Yeah, you'd think so. But so it's about an eight ounce glass and then he drinks it. He drinks it. And it's like, mm, lovely. <sighs> it's warm, though. That's the problem. Maybe it has a cooling. I doubt, in the device, I doubt, right? it, <laughs> doubt it chills it. <laughs> what, do, what do you think? What do you think it tastes like? What do you think human water? Is this like tastes like Dasani? <laughs> tastes like aquafina <laughs> aquafina I, I could see that being aquafina oh man i don't know man i feel like i would just lose my shit trying to get this thing off of me you yeah. think it would be just an unconscious reaction well, to it it is in your back they usually stab people in their back higher up so yeah. it's not somewhere you can reach very easily but yeah just uh drains captain douche he's literally a captain was a captain Poor Captain Douche. Then Sergeant Douche is promoted to command. They were all captains, apparently. No, no, no. The other guy was a sergeant. Oh. He literally says, Sergeant, this is blah, oh, blah, blah. You're the leader now. Uh, yeah. It was, uh, I can't even remember the guy's name in the movie. It's Captain uh, Rapist. <laughs> God, everybody's a fucking rapist in this movie. Yep. Like, literally, they're straight up pedophilia in this movie. They sell a little girl to a pedophile. Everybody in this, you know, military base is trying to rape all the female subordinates. To like, be fair, so the, here's where we go to the water and power base. The, yeah, uh, tank girl gets captured, and they're trying to. The bad guy wants a breaker, right? And so she start working for them because she killed so many people. On the ride over, after they capture her, she killed another one. Yeah, she <laughs> she. Honey pots another guy, and he leans in to get close to her. I don't, Bro. you know, her sexually harass her, He's, and she uh, she literally says, "Which one of you guys want to get their oil changed?" Yeah, and the guy stands up to get his dick sucked. Like, really, dude? In front of everyone, he's like, "If you use any teeth, I'll kill you." And uh, she just wraps her legs around his head and instantly snaps his neck. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then all the other guards pull out their guns and like freeze. <laughs> Which, <laughs> uh, oh my god, man! Everybody's so stupid in this movie. It's so painful. They thought that they were making a fucking comic book masterpiece. I, I don't. They really did. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> the writers weren't very happy. the The actual creators of the comic strips didn't enjoy working on it. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. So, yeah, then we get to the prison scene, and we're introduced to Jet Girl. Yes. Who is uh, Naomi Watts. Mm-hmm. And she fine. Yeah, she 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 good looking. I definitely, I, I, I don't know what it was. She just looked really good in this movie. She's younger. Naomi Watts is a very attractive woman, but uh, she looked really good in this movie. So, yeah, if I was new Captain Douche, uh, I would definitely be hitting on her, too. Mm-hmm. The new captain is just pretty much trying to rape her, and uh, yep, she refuses. So he's like, "Okay, well, I'm taking away all of your." Uh, yeah, he takes away her flight privileges and access yep. to the hangar. But she was a fucking slave. She's a mechanic. Yeah, it's like, why would you kick her out of the hangar when she's repairing drop ships? For I don't you? know, man. They put the fucking deep in charge of. <laughs> Criminal investigations, okay? <laughs> but they don't care. That's the difference. <laughs> uh. But so everybody in this facility is either a soldier or a slave, and there's no in between. In a sense, our good guys are killing so many slaves 
It's in, it's ridiculous. So she's a slave. She wouldn't have flight privileges. You wouldn't think so, but apparently she does. Why would you put a slave in charge of a gunship? Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. Let me go around. And- she, so she's willing, though. But, she, but so she's th- Here's the thing. They're actively abusing all these people. It's not like cultural systematic abuse. No. They are actively raping and beating and abusing these people. And you're going to fucking hand one of them? A weapon of war? <laughs> well, apparently she hasn't <laughs> been that abused, and she's being subordinate. So maybe they leave her alone for the most part. That's how that's her mentality. Is you don't say anything, don't acknowledge it, and they leave <laughs> you alone. These guys are just next level stupid. They are beyond stupid. This society is so dumb it could not possibly exist well there's no more water danny <laughs> it doesn't matter except for all of the thousands of gallons you know of what water there wasn't any water left in fucking mad max and i believe immortal joe's empire more than i believe this yeah. okay that's the other thing it's, it's <laughs> it definitely has a whole mad max vibe fury road was more believable than this immortal joe was at least kind of good to his people showered them with water every now and then <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you would never give bullets and bombs to somebody you're trying to rape. So Tank Girl takes a dust bath? Yeah. Uh, that's a thing, I guess. That's kind of weird. So this is where she meets Jet Girl. The captain's harassing her, Jet Girl, and she walks up and starts making out with her. Yeah. And it's like, oh, there you are. And the guard gets upset and it's like, ew, gross, and walks away. <laughs> hey, he just doesn't like blondes. Uh, yeah, I, gross. It's because lesbians are bad, right? This is ninety five, right. so right. Can't, Ew. Gays aren't accepted yet. Ew. Will, Ew, gross lesbians. Will, Will and Grace wasn't quite breaking through yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was turned on. <laughs> I mean, Lori Petty looked pretty good in this. Honestly, overall, like she still looked attractive. Like, yeah. I hated her personality and her voice and everything she did, but she was still attractive. God. She was in a movie with Polly Shore. Was she? Yep. Oh, God. It was called In the Army Now. No shit. Have you ever seen that? I have vague memories of it. I might have to make you watch it. Oh, God. No. <laughs> no. 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 You made me watch this piece no. of shit. <laughs> One fucking mess up. I'm like, in the Army Now. So. <laughs> This is this is a very unique kind of bad. They're not bad like this all the time. God. <laughs> that one's pretty rough. Uh, so she had a, a few break off movies that did good before mm-hmm. this. Uh, you had Free Willy, Point Break, um, A League of Their Own. Yeah. I remember she was in A League of Their Own. She was in Free Willy? Yeah. She was in Free Willy. Holy shit. Those are all before. Then after this, she did it in the army now. And then it's just been a bunch of TV shows since. <laughs> That's it. Just fucking killed B it. B-movies. Yeah, D-movies <laughs> D and TV shows. This is her first starring role. And her last. Apparently, she can't do that. No. <laughs> can't do that. This movie was directed by a woman. It was. That's probably why it's so fucking all over the place and incoherent. Mm. Oh, uh, too, too real. Mm. Is that too real for you? <laughs> Maybe it's because based off of a insane comic strip, they link things together that don't make sense. So apparently, a, po- a a lot of the jump cuts that they do, where they animate stuff in between, yeah, was they just didn't film all the scenes. <laughs> 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 they just so they literally didn't film. Some of the scenes in the movie that they needed, so they would animate it and put it in in between. Oh, fuck. Because <laughs> the movie only had a $5 million budget. That's generous. That's a generous budget for the bullshit I saw. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The movie had a $25 million budget. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it's so much worse. It only grossed about $5 million. I'm sorry. <laughs> It grossed like four million worldwide. Holy shit! <laughs> I was I was like fucking five million dollars. That's generous. That's like fucking Steven Seagal movies today. <laughs> yeah, twenty five million. Oh, that 
That's fucking terrible. <laughs> At least Malcolm McDowell got paid. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. So, <laughs> God, <laughs> that's awful. The way they cut stuff. Yeah. Where, like, even a scene where uh, it's almost, they did like a little montage where, uh, so after this, they, they break out. I wonder what the first cut of this movie looked like then before they went back and said, hey, we need to just animate all these scenes, try to link all this bullshit together. Uh, so there was also about an hour of this movie, supposedly, that got cut out. How? I don't, in between just not shooting all the scenes and then the studio, MGM. They left a fucking dance number in here. Oh, and you're telling so me awful. <laughs> they got an hour of bullshit? Yeah. But they left a fucking dance sequence in it? I guess there's, <laughs> they probably just paid too much for that dance sequence. Holy shit. Wow. So. Wow, dude. There was, I'll tell you about later about one. <laughs> particular scene that got cut apparently that exists oh, out there oh man so but yeah the, the way they do all the jump cuts they'll show her falling back into a chair and it'll yeah. cut back and forth it's just nauseating yeah there there needs to be a motion sickness warning on this movie Ugh. the way it fucking just it's all over the damn place mm -hmm. it's rough it is fucking rough to watch they get out of well they, they don't get out of prison they take after they torture Tank Girl a bit. Well, she's not Tank Girl yet. She's, she's not just, Tank Girl. She's just she's girl. She's just girl. <laughs> but girls only have... All the girls in this, there's Tank Girl, Sub Girl. Uh, sub Girl? There's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we, 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 haven't, we haven't met Sub Girl yet, but uh, she's in about halfway through. Who the fuck is Sub Girl? Well, we're almost there. <laughs> so, yeah, we got Tank Girl and Jet Girl right now, right? Yes. So... It's not the rain chick, is it? What? It's not the the weird yeah, rain yeah. woman? Yeah. That's sub girl? Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so So the bad guy uh, Kesley, he's like, "Oh, I'm going to I'm going to use her and she's going to work for me no matter what." Right. I'm going to send her and have her deal with the rippers because the rippers just tear apart an army of armed guards. Yeah. It's like this one girl, she can deal with them. So they take her out to this. <laughs> Apparently, they just they burrow around these king, yeah, these kangaroo people. They basically have a Viet a Viet Cong hole, yep, fucking flared off, yeah. And they're like, <laughs> "That's a ripper hole. Jump down in there and kill a one." <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, "No, that's dumb." <laughs> and uh, the, the rippers attack and murder his entire platoon. Yeah. Apparently, they're immune to guns. Yeah, but they're not. No. <laughs> no, as we see later. So yeah, none of no one fires at them at all. They just all run around screaming, and they just hop around murdering all of them. And of course, at this point, we don't know they're kangaroos, so we don't see that. They shoot like stormtroopers. They have uh -huh. to. They spray. But you can <laughs> clearly see the wire half the time when they yes. pop out the screen. It's so oh, bad. Oh my goodness. They, they didn't even take the time to edit out even the wire. Even when they throw a guard or something, yep. you can see the wires attached to the guards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's so bad. So Tank Girl hides, and Jet Girl steals a jet. She she stows away on one. She ejects the pilot. <laughs> yeah, because you can just do that. Yeah, you can eject the pilot, and then you can fly the ship. <laughs> yeah, she takes over. I'm pretty sure ejecting the pilot also ruins the cockpit. No, but it's it's perfectly fine. There's a new chair, right? Another <laughs> chair just pops up out of the ground. Yeah. It's okay. And uh, so she has her jet now, mm -hmm. and uh, she goes and gets Tank Girl, and Tank Girl's like, no, nah, I'm taking this tank with me. And you get the weirdest jump cut that, it felt like a montage of her learning how to drive the tank. Because yeah. Because she has no idea. She's in this tank just hitting every lever and mm -hmm. smacking everything. She's like, go, go. And then the rest of the movie, the tank just drives itself. After they jack the vehicles, mm -hmm. they go to, I guess... Sub girl's place. Yeah, so this is <laughs> kind of like the middle point of the movie. Too. Yeah, but there's no fucking, there's no reason why they would go here. There's no connective tissue. It's like a flea market. They go to this this market. This chick just lurk, looking through this stuff, and she pulls a, a gun out? Well, yeah, it's remember. like a shotgun or something. Yeah, it's, it's such a confusing scene. 
they're talking and she has them she has it pointed at Jet Girl. And Tank Girl just walks behind her and smacks her with the fish. Yeah. She's like, You're water and power. And they're just like, No, we're not, we're prisoners. And she's just like, Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> I was like, what? On top of that, <laughs> the fucking Jet happening? Girl has a truth detector. Yeah. That they just never use again and it just disappears the rest nope. of the movie. Don't it's just this for the no scene. More. She has a truth detector. So when they mod their vehicles, yeah. a fucking team of Starfleet engineers working a month could not mod these vehicles into this as quickly. No. They could. Because <laughs> obviously whatever they're doing was just gluing on random shit to this fucking tank. The jet goes oh, yeah. from looking roughly like, I don't know, like a pelican or mm-hmm. a fucking a raptor from Battlestar Galactica. It's the uh, the dropship from Clone Wars. Yeah. It goes Kinda from like looking that. like a dropship yeah, yeah. to looking like an F4 fighter jet. Yeah. Like an F4 Phantom. It completely changes. Yeah, it completely that, changes. It's a completely different vehicle. The tank is the same way. The tank completely changes. It turns into... It, it looks like an ATV, but apparently this tank was a... Uh, Venezuelan tank, I believe. They I bought, don't know. They, they fucking for Venezuela for for the movie. They wait, they went and bought. They bought a fucking tank. Well, it, it was bought before. <laughs> it's been in other movies, but okay. so yeah. <laughs> I was about to say well, <laughs> they're blowing their budget on stupid shit. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> uh, I know where a million dollars of their budget went. Ice tea. Ice tea, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I uh, remember that interview. Oh, yeah. Some guy was like, why the fuck did you do Tank Girl? I was like, I got paid a million dollars. He's like, oh. Hoppity hop, 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 hop. hop. <laughs> uh, yeah, he but, went on Howard Stern and was talking about yeah, it. Yeah, man. It was great. But, so, Sub Girl, how is that a thing? I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but everything is sand. Yeah. Submarines. It's a sand submarine. Don't go through the sand. <laughs> I don't know. That's her name. That's Subgirl. And that was supposed to be played by Bjork. What? Yep. That was supposed to be Bjork. And she actually went through the start of filming. Holy and then, shit. I don't know. She just wanted more money and they cut her. Could you imagine that Icelandic bullshit in this movie, too? Yeah. Oh, my she, God. Part of the soundtrack was Bjork. It had a bunch of, like, British rock bands. Was, like, Bjork has some music and then some iced tea. And uh, it's, it's a bunch of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So they, they mod their vehicles and they go to get the little girl. Because yeah, she sees some of the items that were from the house that the little girl made. Yeah. And she's the uh, sub girl tells her that I sold uh, I bought them from this from this pedophile. <laughs> it was from a they captured her and took her. They sold all of her shit and took her and sold her to the liquid silver. Yeah. Which is just a brothel, a underground sex club. And then we get the worst part of the movie. <laughs> Somehow they took the part with nudity, oh, borderline nudity, and made it the part I wanted to skip. Yes, and made it the worst part of the fucking movie. <laughs> I'm just like, this should be really hot, and I just I want to fast forward this. I don't <laughs> so, want to watch this. The, I don't want to watch this. Liquid Silver <laughs> is just an underground water club. They have a bunch of attractive girls for the most part, just showering in water. And a bunch of old, gross guys <laughs> just <laughs> sitting around doing random sex stuff. Right. I honestly, I'm not sure if this was actually a part of the movie or th- they were just filming and happened upon a s- <laughs> <laughs> the scene. And I was like, hey, uh, let's just put this in the movie. Dude. Because that's what it, it feels like something that just <laughs> happens. This was all shot in an abandoned mall. This that. scene was in an abandoned mall, and most of the other scenes where the waterworks and stuff was actually shot in abandoned mines. I could see that. Over in Arizona. But yeah. So they go in, 
and find the girl who the the madam is the leader of this place mm-hmm. uh some pedophile was like i want a schoolgirl thing so they give her sam which is the little girl that yeah. was at the house at the beginning of the they movie. give her a literal a literal schoolgirl thing yeah yeah i figured a schoolgirl thing is like okay i like a schoolgirl thing but that's like a plaid skirt and a, <laughs> and a button-up shirt that's a schoolgirl thing and anyone could do that. Yeah. But it was like, oh, here's a 10-year-old. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh. Yeah. It's a little bit different than the fantasies that most people think about when they think a schoolgirl fantasy. Yeah. But, you know, Sam's tough. She defends herself. She has the murder ball yeah, still the murder on her. ball that spikes a guy <laughs> and she walks off. Oh. Uh, this, this weapon is nonsensical. It's a clapper. Yeah. You clap and spikes come out. I don't know what use it would ever have except for if a pervert's about to rape you and he's trying to steal your shit. I'm just saying, man, the toys in Future Earth are next level. They play with different stuff, okay? You're right. This is hot potato. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to blow your mind at the end of this movie. Oh, God. At the end of this. (laughs) You already blew my mind with fucking submarine (laughs) girl. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I, I guess all the females in this world have to have a theme and then girl at the end of the... Yeah. I mean, they, have, they actually have names. Which is fine. I mean, Tank Girl's name is actually Rebecca something. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, they're literal superheroes. It's fine. Pretty it's, much. It's fine she, for them to be, you yeah. know... She fears nothing or and no one. It's, it's fine for them to be like Supergirl or Wonder Woman or whatever, right? It's It's okay for them to have girl as a suffix. Yeah. So, the, I watched an interview with Lori Petty talking about this movie and how uh, they, they got slapped with the rated R. Yeah. And she's like, there's nothing in this movie that's rated R. The only reason it's rated R is because it had a, a female lead. If this was a guy lead, this wouldn't be rated R. Yeah, they don't drop any real F-bombs in this, do they? No, they, they really don't curse. But there is a sex club. With a bunch of not complete nudity, but they like got pasties tassels. on. They have pasties and tassels, yeah. which that's borderline. Yeah, and uh, there's not like a lot of blood and gore. When they got the rated R, they should have went back through this and fucking amped up. That's the what. Rated so R. she said, if she had known that it was going to be rated R, that she would have went through the entire movie naked. Yeah, <laughs> might as well. She's like, I just would have been nude the whole time. So this scene, they get the girl, and then they're trying to escape, and the madam calls the guards on them. Yeah. But they pull a gun to her, and then force her to sing, and then it starts this whole musical dance where Tank Girl sings and dance and makes all the perverts there and women sing and dance. Yeah. Until the waterworks shows up because they're angry because they're singing or something. They just happen to be there. I have no idea. But they're like, stop all this singing and start uh, tear bombing them. Yeah. The one guy was like, what the hell is that noise? Captain, new, go, new Captain Douche. Yeah. He's like, go stop this. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate this musical number anyways. I will definitely go stop this. <laughs> yeah. And the whole song they sing, the song's at the end of the movie too. It's about just sex. It's talking about let's do it. Everything yeah. does it. Like the birds and the bees do it. Everything, everyone does it. Yeah. Falls in love is what they're doing. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate musicals. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. You hate musicals? But I couldn't tell. <laughs> it's okay. They're just spraying water around. Just uh, like fucking irresponsible bitches. How is this a thing? (laughs) Uh, There's no water left, Danny. Yeah, it'd be like, oh, hey, what's up, water world? We're looking for dry land, man. What fuck? There's dry land everywhere. What the fuck? Yeah. (laughs) We got so much land, we just dump it into the fucking ocean. (laughs) (laughs) It's like Kevin Costner is just (laughs) digging up. The last bit of earth and just dumping it into the ocean the whole fucking time. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yep. Here's another part of the movie that is just so dumb. It doesn't make sense. Water and power capture Sam. Again. Which I guess they never captured her before. Maybe she hid. I don't, I don't know who sold her 
the, it never says who sells her no. to this sex club. It doesn't. Who she was originally just doing labor for. So they capture her, even though Tank Girl and Jet Girl are just standing right there. Yeah. And the guards are running past them, not doing anything. Mm-hmm. They don't give a shit about them. And the whole bad guy's plan is we're going to capture Sam Girl to lure her in. That way we can capture... Oh, I'm sorry, Sam Girl. <laughs> we, we're going to capture this little girl to lure in Tank Girl and Jet Girl. Yeah, but that they're way right we there. capture them. They're right like, there. They're literally right there, unarmed. Just yeah. fucking grab them. Yeah. The, no, no. And <sighs> and at the very least, you think they would just look over and be like, hey, isn't that some of our military hardware? Why don't we just take that back with us, too? Yeah. No. They let them keep the tank. They let them <laughs> keep the jet. Uh, this whole scene is so stupid. This tank kills so many people on its own. It's just on its own. It, it literally, <laughs> it's a sentient AI. It's a one-man army. It's a so, one-tank army. Tank Girl actually talks about in that interview that in one of the scenes, so there's someone piloting the tank, of course, throughout the movie, yeah. but there's someone shit on this tank. One of the scenes where she's riding on the barrel, it takes off, and she falls onto the tread well. Oh, and yeah. she's sitting like on the tread well, and watching the the wheels go around, and <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> and uh, she's on this thing just clinging onto it for dear life for like a minute. Please stop and, it! And it never stops, and he finally stops, and uh, she's like, "Why the fuck didn't you stop?" It's like well, I couldn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> she almost got murdered by the tank. <laughs> that would have been a much better movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it probably wouldn't have come out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're right. It wouldn't have been Tank Girl anymore. It would have been the Adventures of Jet Girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm okay with. Jet Girl's hot. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> oh, also, we find out that Kessley is still alive. He's lost his arm. Yeah. And apparently his face got mauled by the kangaroos because <laughs> the kangaroos are man-eating monsters. <laughs> 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 they, they ripped his arm off and clawed his face, and he, he got out with Captain New Douche. They ripped his face off, yeah. So this doctor's like, you're never going to see again. Um, you're lucky to be alive. And then they bring in James Hong. I think his name is like Chetsai. Yeah. Who's this cybernetic doctor Yeah, from China. He gives him a, a metal arm mm-hmm. that has a bunch of spinny spike things in it yeah spinny things that, are, that lets him cut through metal now apparently and then you see he pulls out these weird scissor tong things yeah and it looks like he cuts his head off he does he yeah which we i it cuts away right with him cutting his head off but you, you don't see it but you hear the life uh, yeah the life monitor go yeah beep. the life go monitor flat lines and then it cuts away from that so where do you think they put his head so yeah, we find out <laughs> later that his body at the end of the movie where you find out he they put a hologram on his head. Yeah. Because he looks normal. But his whole head is a hologram. And it's like, you can't hurt me. That's not so, what that means at all. <laughs> that means his head is somewhere. Yeah. In a jar or something controlling his body. Do you think so? Or do you think his head is just, say, like up his ass or something? No. 100% his head is somewhere else. And he's just remotely controlling his body now, mm. which means he's still alive in this movie because they defeat him or whatever. And she runs out of ammunition in the tank because the tank fucking goes through and murders everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the tank ran out of people so to murder. She shoots a bucket that's above his head that's full of water. Yeah. Because out here in the middle of the desert in this She's... work area, there's just a bucket full of water up there. Yeah. She was loading cans, beer cans into mm. the... Uh, the, the cannon and firing at him, but he was blocking all of them. So right. she had to shoot the bucket. It dumps water on him. Short circuits him. Yeah. And then she uh she did something else to kill he him. He gets but. pinned electrically like to a metal thing at one point too. And she rips That's his basic- arm off, Oh but- she she stabs him with the water thing. Oh yeah she she water sucks his life out. But so yeah he's not dead though. He literally says that. He literally says this isn't over. Or oh, some shit like no, that. No 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 he he says um you can't kill me or something like that. Yeah. It was, but no, while he's glitching out, mm-hmm. he's saying something along the lines of this isn't over. Yeah. Kind of stuff. Yeah. He should still be alive because his head's not there. 
There's no way they were, they were thinking about making a sequel to this dog shit. I bet you they were. They're, pff, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. We'll get a sequel eventually. It's just got a pretty big fan following now. Yeah. Can't wait for DC to make this one. Yeah. <laughs> this was MGM. This wasn't DC. <laughs> MGM bought the rights of Tank Girl for $25,000 so they could film this movie. <laughs> That's... They spent too much. <laughs> uh, I think I should have went the other way around. I think they should have paid GM $25,000 to take the rights to Tank Girl. <laughs> so, before the whole end scene where they get in that fight, Tank Girl and Jet Girl go and they're like, we need soldiers. Yeah. So, they go and find the man the, rippers. Eating, the man-eating monsters. Yeah. The yep. rippers. Because, like, we can reason with them. It'll be fine. <laughs> They'll, they'll come to the terms. They eat men, not women. Yeah. <laughs> so we are introduced to Ice T. There's six of them. They're all kangaroo monsters. So not seeing, not, not remembering anything about this. All you know is that there's some type of kangaroo hybrid. And two of them are obviously played by African American actors. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if. They altered kangaroos, and kangaroos turned into black people. <laughs> but we find out very shortly that, no, they were actually people, <laughs> and they happened to be turned into <laughs> kangaroo monsters. <laughs> what? <laughs> you thought all kangaroos are black people? I just... I don't, no. It's like I thought maybe the movie thought that. I knew all these guys weren't black. It was just the two of them. But it was just oh, real shit. fucking awkward. It felt kind of racist. <laughs> it was entirely racist. It was so fucking racist. Yeah. The, the one dude literally. DT. He is a fucking jazz man who plays a saxophone and says poetry that makes no fucking sense. It's just random words. <laughs> there's there's a bit of poetry in this, but yeah, he does um, what's the the hip hop poetry stuff? Oh, oh slam, slam yeah, poetry. he's a slam poet. Yeah, he does slam poetry and like, <laughs> but knowing that okay, he was before the comment. He's old enough. Yeah, so it was that normal person. the The one guy says that uh, he's their tech guy. Uh, mm -hmm. He says that he worked at a Circuit City, effectively, or some shit like that, right? Yeah, like a parts store. So they just. Took random people and mutated them with kangaroo DNA. Into kangaroo monsters. <laughs> for supposedly they were created by uh, the prophet, uh, Johnny Prophet, is yeah. the doctor's name. This almost, They were created for a war. Yeah. But it never says, they said the war ended, so they were going to just kill him off. This whole part felt like just a completely different movie mashed onto this. It was real weird. But this is in the comics. So when I looked it up, what the Rippers were, because I was confused at who worked for who at the beginning. The whole thesis of the, the comic is Tank Girl goes around taking random adventures with her boyfriend, Boogie, who's a kangaroo mutant. Um, Booga. Yeah, that's a sentence you said. Yep. <laughs> yep. And uh, <laughs> so Booga is the one that likes them. They're debating on whether they should. Ice-T wants to murder them. Yeah. Yeah, the, the one tech one wants to hump them. AKA rape them. Yeah. And then probably eat them. Either way, they're getting eaten. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Booga just like, I just want tea and crumpets. <laughs> we ain't having no fucking tea and crumpets. We're going to take these bitches outside. And we're going to fucking kill them. We're going to smoke them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God, dude. Ice T is right. Ice T is right about everything. His character's name's T Saint. He's right. He's oh, just right. Why? Taking them outside and killing them was the right call. <laughs> Pretty much. But, just was. But no, then they can't hump him. The weapons thing being a, a complete trap the entire time was right. It was right on the money. Well, Dude's right. Okay. So he's right about that. So yeah. they vote and it's split 3-3 three, three to murder him or rape him. And uh, so they flip a coin. <laughs> 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 and apparently they get to live. And then that's where Booga kind of... Uh, Death by Ugu. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, so that's when they uh, 
Booga kind of gets close to uh to Tank Girl and they they talk and stuff. So they decide, okay, we're gonna trust these girls and have a weird dance party sequence where they're yeah. instantly like, okay, they're part of us, and they just start humping their legs. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Watts gets raped by a kangaroo on the dance floor. Yes. Who literally says, it's okay, I have condoms. Yeah, it's okay. She's like, I'm not very good at this. It's okay, I have condoms, and just starts humping her. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, one of the scenes cut from this movie. No, oh, no. Is a sex scene. Oh, no. Between Booga and Tank Girl. And apparently cuts to after they had had sex. And it shows a prosthetic kangaroo dick that apparently they spent $5,000 on. You <laughs> 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 see, so you're telling me if I go and Google right now, yep. there's a picture of a prosthetic I, kangaroo dick. I don't dick. know. I, I never, I, I didn't, I couldn't find a picture. <laughs> apparently it was a deleted scene. <laughs> they, they never made it. But that oh. was one of the scenes of the movie. Where's the Blu-ray extras? Uh <laughs> For real. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. No. No. Five thousand no. dollars for that donger. That kangaroo donger. You don't fucking make a kangaroo dick. Yep. No, that's not this wouldn't even do that. Disney was going <laughs> to make this movie. When they were looking for <laughs> people yeah, for companies to no. sponsor this. Disney was going to they didn't want to go with Disney because they were like they're going to take too much of the they're going to take their kangaroo dick yeah. scene <laughs> they're going to take too much of the violence and sexuality out of this oh my goodness could you imagine if this was a Disney movie and like I mean it could be completely different all the stuff they'd have to change I guess we're about to see with Deadpool <sighs> I I hopefully Disney will be smart enough not to touch Deadpool because literally that's kind of what this I honestly, like, you know, here's the thing: if they change it too much, I think Ryan Reynolds will walk away. Yeah, and it won't be the same movie without Ryan Reynolds. I will not see it. If he walks away from that project, it's dead to me. Yeah, but she hasn't yet, and they're they're already filming it. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see if they, they cut everything or not. But it's just, it's supposed to be R. They're working on uh, R stuff content for their audience. So. Did Tank Girl actually break fourth wall? Any of this? Oh yeah, yeah, quite a bit. I can't remember a, a specific time where she was talking to me. She doesn't talk to you, but she just throws in quips and she'll look at the camera. She looked at the camera a few times. Yeah, I guess you're right. She does wink at the camera. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, she she does break fourth wall. It's just weird. So we recruit the Well, they send her they send them on a mission to test. Yeah. Test we got to test their yeah. loyalty. Yeah. To make sure they're not Water and power. Yeah, we got to send them after this uh, shipment of weapons. Yep. And it's like, no, you just steal it. So basically, they Immortal, go Immortal Joe is trading Aquacola for some ammunition and weapons from Bullet Town. So <laughs> there's a we they, they go to this weapons depot. They're picking up the shipment. Mm -hmm. Water and power is. And straight up, Tank Girl and Jet Girl just walk in like they're shooting a calendar. Yeah, bad, and they want these workers to be models, mm -hmm. and these workers are just a hundred percent on board and super fucking excited. Again, they're slaves. <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking slaves. And they're so stupid. Yeah, uh, painfully stupid. And so we get a little chase scene where she's riding on the tank, and they hijack the truck with the guns. Yeah, and take it back. But apparently. It didn't have guns. It was dirt. And then one of the boxes had Johnny Prophet's corpse. I feel like there's a bunch of backstory that probably mattered about Johnny character. Prophet. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's Subgirl mentions a prophecy of, like it's going to rain again or something. The rain's coming and stuff. And Johnny Prophet went to New Zealand yep. to. He's working with the work scientists. On technology to turn ocean water mm -hmm. into normal drinking water. Yeah. So apparently there's fucking oceans somewhere. There's still oceans, yeah. Because they're on Australia. This takes place in Australia. This doesn't. No, no, this does. That was definitely in California, though. 
It shows at the beginning of the movie the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. But the comics take place in Australia, and this is supposed to be Australia. You were shitting me. I yeah. thought this was <laughs> California. They, they, I don't the know why they show. Time. They show the Golden Gate Bridge in ruins, <laughs> but it's supposed to be in Australia. I thought this was in California no. the whole fucking time. No, that's why it goes to New Zealand. God damn this movie. <laughs> Fuck this movie, dude. Fuck this movie. Of course, movie. it's a British comic, which Australia was owned by Britain forever, oh, but my God. still. Uh, oh. Yeah. Of course, they're king. No shit. Of course, yeah, they're king. That's why they're king. <laughs> damn it. Uh, fuck. Fuck. Fuck me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. I, this wasn't the big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> it was my I thought reveal. you knew this. I thought you knew this. No, it didn't even fucking occur to me that this was going on in Australia. I was sitting here the whole time. I was like, why are there fucking cake people in California? How did the U.S. government think making kangaroo soldiers was the because, I mean, honestly, kangaroo is the best candidate. Look how powerful they have. Super jumps and uh, they got Super claws. jumps? You want to kick really hard? You want to box with a kangaroo? Yeah, they'll, they'll fucking yeah, kill, they'll kill you. you. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it makes just as much sense as fucking Velociraptor soldiers from... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Everything <laughs> in Jurassic World is 100% <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Nothing in Jurassic, any of the Jurassic Park movies oh, ever been man. fake. Oh, my goodness, so, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. But, okay, they're all... I'm sorry. They were all mutated from humans, You're except for Booga who Tank Girl falls in love with, who says, I used to be a dog. Yes. But they upgraded me to a human status. <laughs> <She's> kind of. <laughs> making love. She's having sex with a dog. A kangaroo. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I guess that really makes Johnny Prophet's trip to New Zealand make fucking more sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> yes. So uh, they go in. Their plan is they're going to have Tank Girl fly the Rippers in. Yeah. Tank Girl's like, I'm not going up my tank. So she just charges in. It literally is parasailing yeah. from the back of the, the top of the tank while the tank just murders everyone. And she's just shooting. She's and it, spraying randomly. Yeah, just spraying and shooting. And, uh, while any of the guards that shoot at her, the bullets are just ricocheting off her parachute. God, and they are all British rifles. They're the fucking bullpup British rifles. I just, in my mind, I'm just like, oh, they wanted a futuristic looking gun that Americans wouldn't recognize. But no, it's literally because they're... It's a British comic, yeah. yeah. It's Australia. Fuck me. God, I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, I should have been in this movie. <laughs> Apparently, I should have. I should have been Sergeant Douchebag's underling, right? Yeah, yeah. You Fuck could've. me. I mean, I wouldn't mind sexually harassing Naomi Watts. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> gross. Yeah. This whole movie just made me feel gross. <laughs> you picked it! I Fuck did. you! <laughs> oh, just, just starting out, I, just <laughs> the music at the start of this, I was like, God, I'm fucking, I already hate it. <laughs> I'm definitely not watching this one through twice. That fucking fell asleep halfway through. Uh, and had to rewatch half of it. So I was just having nightmares of this garbage the whole night. <laughs> it's okay, man. It's all right. I'm sure there's support groups for that. So the final scene is they go in and storm this base, the right. water and power. They make it in. For some reason, the bad guy, Kesley, McDowell was like, oh, I'm going to put this little girl in a tube and slowly start to drown her. Yep. To make sure that they come or they, they know they're there. Yeah. But it's like, okay, our trap worked, right? <laughs> <laughs> Since we have the girl, they have to come to us, even though we could have just captured them ourselves. Now they're here. Okay, I'm going to start drowning this girl. That way they have to, like, rescue her while trying to fend off and Dude, fall into our that trap. makes no sense. But the whole thing is, like, okay, him and Tank Girl square off. Yeah. And as we are talking about earlier, and as he's fighting, he's like, ha, ha, you fell into my trap. 
you're doomed now. I've won. <laughs> and every time it cuts back to the Rippers, they're just murdering <laughs> everything wholesale killing yes. all these so guards they're like oh we don't work well at daytime or we, we don't do so well in the light yeah so dt sacrifices himself and jumps over and cuts off he goes and hugs the, the breaker box yeah so there's a switch in the middle of this room and it cuts off the power to the entire base dt actually gets shot which we see for the first time, someone uses the gun against one of these things, and it, he dies. The yeah. Rippers actually die. Kills him real good, and it was just a pistol. Of course, he gives some, like, some slam poetry to, at the end <laughs> before he dies. <laughs> it's all cool, brother. Yeah. <laughs> God. And they, they get upset, of course, and then they go on a murdering spree. And a homeboy's like, oh, you're, you, you fell for this trap. <laughs> you're screwed now. Yeah, we well, got you right where we want you. <laughs> and, uh, with your fucking tank rolling around outside, <laughs> murdering everybody yeah. on its own. The Rippers murder everyone inside, and the tank killed everyone outside. <laughs> and then the tank comes in, just rolls in on its own, and it's like, oh, I'm out of ammo. Reload me. <laughs> no, the tank rolls in because it's like, I'm out of people to murder outside. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead out there. I, I, I killed them real good. They defeat hologram face guy. Then all the soldiers surrender. They take their bullets. I took all their bullets out of their guns. I'm real smart, ain't I? Yeah, real smart. That's real smart, <laughs> Duga. Booga. That's it. And, That's uh, the last line of the movie. And, yeah, well, they, they saved Sam. Yep. I didn't think the pipe worked like that, by the way. I thought the pipe was like a gravity thing, and it just goes squish right at the end of it. It just kills you by blunt they, force it, trauma. The the way the pipe looked, it wasn't even angled downward. It was just a pipe. They they put a hose in there. So I, I literally just thought it was like a funneling pipe mm -hmm. that just finally kills you by just speed and blunt force trauma. Nah, that wouldn't kill you. It, it would. But it's it's, more, you, it's not supposed to kill you. It's a torture device. So it just triggers a claustrophobia. But she has like flashbacks of all those people dying. Her boyfriend that she didn't give that much of a shit about because she's <laughs> fucking a kangaroo the next day a kangaroo dog man <laughs> he's very dumb oh captain God. america level dumb jesus <laughs> I, I told you there's worst comic book movies out there <laughs> uh, <you're right. laughs> I, I would rather watch <laughs> captain america than this <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I watched Captain America a couple of times, but this, I was like, there's no way I can go back. Uh, it's so painful. Man. It's nauseating. Mm -hmm. There's jump cuts. But you know what? None of the animation sequences make sense. I would go back and just watch all the parts of Jet Girl again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God damn oh, it. Yeah. Like, none of the animation sequences make sense. No. So they commissioned animation to link all this shit together because they didn't have a cohesive storyline, but mm -hmm. then turn around and all the animation still didn't fucking make sense. They were trying to link shit together. What? Why would they why would they do that? Because I, I didn't know. mind the stylization of, of the animation, right? Yeah. Because it was that mid nineties like fucking Ren and Stimpy style animation. It was like right? heavy metal. It yeah. reminded me of heavy metal. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Totally like heavy metal. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That, that gritty, just God, '90s had a different like. There's no, there's no like CGI or computer graphics. It's just right. raw. Mm -hmm. It's just raw cartoon, and it was fine. But they but just, it, it just, it jumps so much. You it, can't it tell did, what the fuck's going on. It didn't on. make sense. Yeah. So it's like the sequence where they they steal the equipment and then go to, I guess, Subgirl's place. Mm -hmm. That connective tissue that they did with animation. Didn't make sense. Well, that's why it, it felt like she was learning how to drive the tank. It, it showed her like in the tank and Jet Girl with her, their skin flying off as they're just yeah. jetpacking around in a tank or some shit. Yeah. So I, I don't know. That's yeah. why I thought it was a, a learning montage, but whatever. Oh, I don't man. know. So what was supposed to blow my mind? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I did some math. Oh, man. So at the beginning of this movie. Yeah. Do you know what year it is? 2033. 2033. Yes. How long has it been since the comet come? 10 years. It says it hasn't rained since it hasn't the comet rained come. It 10 years. It has, which was when the comet hit. It's not 10 years. It is 11 years. 
We're going to get hit by a comet this year. Oh my god. 2033 minus 11. This is this is a direct sequel to This is a direct sequel to Don't Look Up. Oh yeah? Yeah. Don't Look Up ends with it getting smashed by a comet. It could be. Then 10 years after we get Tank Girl. 11, 11 years. 11. But the comet didn't destroy the earth. That's the difference. The the comet in uh Don't Look Up kind of destroys the earth. But yeah. anyways, this movie predicts that this year we get hit with a comet. And there's still five months left of this. Yeah, year. there's still plenty of year left to go. God, I hope this movie's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Do you really want to be turned into a kangaroo? Well, I mean, only six people got well, selected. We wouldn't be turned into kangaroos no. because that's not our fucking country's mascot. That's Australian. Yeah, yeah. That was in Australia. We'd probably die. America probably got hit with the. Because it doesn't show any Americans in this movie, even though. Uh, the main character is American, but that was just because they, they didn't want to cast a British person. Yeah. <sighs> what do you think Americans would uh, bond their soldiers with? A Wolves? powerful. Uh, so Wolves, it'd be right. It'd be a powerful animal that from our area mm -hmm. would translate to a human. I would think it's either wolves or bears. It'd be a deer, a moose, a moose. It'd be moose. That's Canadian. We have plenty. Of that moose. would be Canadian soldiers. Uh, I guess I could see that. Yeah. Canadians could be polar bears, though. Mexican soldiers would be chupacabras. Wolves doesn't work <laughs> too well. But yeah, I mean, I guess it could be a wolf. Yeah. Dog soldiers. They'd probably just be cows. Because Americans <laughs> are all fat. Man, this... um, They're trying to... They weren't creating it for a war. They were creating it for uh, livestock purposes. I'm not ashamed to say that this is probably the single worst comic book movie ever made. No. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some pretty bad ones. You'd be, I guess, it, but this is on a different level. You'd you'd probably be kind of surprised how many things were derived from comics when it comes down to it. Mm. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that you didn't realize originated from a comic out there that you have seen that's pretty terrible. Yeah, maybe. Normally, when I watch a movie like this, I can be like, yeah, this is really fucking bad, but I can see how there was probably a good story in here somewhere. No. None of that. No, so none of that in this. Even the comic was not very big, and there was a bunch of references to British shows and stuff, and they wanted to translate that, but they, they removed a bunch of that because it just it didn't land. Because there's a lot of pop culture references in this. There is. And if they were all British-based, it wouldn't do well worldwide, which didn't end up mattering anyways. But but the joke she was making wouldn't land on her audience anyways. So the pop culture references she was making, one was Baywatch. Yeah. she. None but, of these people would know what that is. I, I don't know. I think Baywatch. No. Baywatch was probably a lot more standardized because you had um, Hasselhoff, who's huge internationally. Hasselhoff in uh, Asia is huge. So a lot of these because people, you know he, you know he sings over there, right? A lot of these people are pretty young. Yeah, and I could probably go out right now and start making Baywatch references. Nobody would know what the fuck well, I'm talking about. They just they did a Baywatch movie a few years back, like five years ago. They did a new Baywatch movie that had Dwayne Johnson and I know uh, that, yeah. but literally I could probably go out and make Baywatch references and nobody would know what I was talking about. Eh, I think the majority of people would. And then that's another 10 years down the road, 11 years down the road. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a lot of weird pop culture references that shouldn't make sense. At this time, she would be making a Baywatch reference almost, what, 30 years, 40 years after yeah. Baywatch? Think of something that you enjoyed during the 90s, like maybe Ninja Turtles. But yeah, I don't <laughs> know. We'll be making references to stuff we watched as a child still in 10 years, and I'm sure a lot of people won't understand. I made like, a Mighty Python reference at D&D &D the other day, and none of the children knew who it was, what I was talking about. I made a Waterworld reference, and none of them knew what I was talking about, and that's much closer. I, I mean, honestly, I could see people... Mighty Mighty Python's, like, more known than Waterworld, though, I'd say. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. Waterworld was a mainstream movie over here. Mighty Python is still British comedy. I mean, it's not fringe to us, but I yeah. can see how it's fringe to most people. Well, I mean, because I mean, they haven't done anything in a long time, right? right? All of her, all of her humor is just not humorous. I, I hate like all of her one-liners are just fucking terrible. I right. hated them. Every line she had was just bad. Yeah, every line. This is um, this is a ten. This is a ten. I, 
<sighs> it's really bad. It's really painful through and through. And it's racist. That's 10. There's a lot of <laughs> rape. There's an incest joke in this. There's an incest joke in this? Yeah. There's... Tank Girl makes a reference to having sex with her daddy. Yes. It was hilarious. Yeah. So fucking funny. <laughs> but I, I'm going to go nine. Directed by a woman, by the way. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go nine uh, on the heat meter. The, the, this, the one part you liked. <laughs> it's just because <laughs> Naomi Watts is hot. Yeah. I figured. Jet Girl was hot. And I, I liked her character. I joined the, the nerdy I liked introvert. Ice, I liked Ice T. I liked Ice T, but, but he was very angry. But seeing Ice T done like this felt racist. It did. It <sighs> the kangaroo felt really racist, but we you know whatever. He got paid a million bucks. Uh, you know what's funny? When he was talking about that, <laughs> the movie he did before this mm -hmm. was New Jack City, and that made I don't know hundred million dollars or something. It was pretty big. That was his big breakout role. It, he only got paid like I think. $45,000 for New Jack City. Oh. And then he did this, and he uh he got a million, so. Man, I guess he finally got in the end, but. Yeah, yeah. This is a different kind of bad. It's pretty rough. I don't recommend watching this movie. Oh, no. I don't. Normally, I recommend watching this stuff. Not this. This needs to be forgotten. Yeah. I mean, even though it had a couple good actors in it, there, there's other movies. <laughs> There's other movies. There's plenty of movies where uh, Naomi Watts gets nude. And then there's plenty of movies where uh, McDowell go watch Clockwork Orange or something, you know? Yeah. So. He's a good bad guy in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He does good bad guy. Yeah. Well. <laughs> All right. It was in fucking Australia the whole time. <laughs> well, hopefully I'll get this out before the comet hits. And uh, just make sure that uh, <laughs> right before we die, just uh, you know, like and subscribe. Then leave a comment. Yep. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Hit us up in the comments below. Let us know. Don't let us know what you think because I don't. I hope nobody has opinions of this movie. I hope nobody sees this movie. <laughs> it's just a cult <laughs> classic now. It's got a fan base. Well, uh, what kind of cult? We're talking Heaven's Gate or um, you're drinking the Flavor Aid? It's uh, yeah, jo Jonestown. <laughs> Jonestown cult. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, man. All right. Thanks for joining us.